was a battle in Corvallis tonight, but the Gonzaga women lost a close one to Oregon State. That means their season is over, but there's still so much to be proud of. We'll have a live report from Gil Coliseum. The last week of March shaping up to be mild, but I'll let you know when you can expect some rain showers throughout our area. Making the bike share program permanent, assuring the lobby to city halls open to everyone and giving incentives to businesses to beef up security. There was a lot happening at the city council meeting tonight. We'll tell you what passed. Good evening and thank you for joining us. I'm Mark Hanrahan. Welcome everyone. I'm Whitney Ward. It was a very busy night at Spokane City Hall. We've been tracking three different measures that could have a significant impact on the city. Our political reporter Casey Decker was inside the council meeting tonight and has what exactly happened. Yeah, like you guys mentioned, there were three big proposals on the table today. All three of them passed. The council approved a measure creating some incentives for some businesses downtown to enhance security. They approved changes to the city code that will allow the bike and scooter sharing programs to come back permanently this spring. And after seven deferments, they ultimately did pass a measure that affirms that the first floor lobby of the Spokane City Hall is open to all members of the public. We'll begin with that one. We've been covering it for a little while now. It was first proposed on November 5th. It says that the first floor lobby of City Hall is open to any member of the public during business hours for as long as they want. They basically can only be removed if they're causing a disturbance. It's been delayed so many times, mostly because the city workers unions had security concerns. Today, there was impassioned testimony for the measure, but some skepticism about how relevant it really is to the broader issue of homelessness. That's what City Hall is about. When somebody's too cold, let them come and get warm. When they're too warm, let them come in and get cool. When they need protection, let them come in and be protected. The fundamental problem with this is the homeless and our employees have been caught in the middle of this battle now for I don't know how many months, and no one wins. But the eighth time was the charm. It finally passed tonight by a vote of five to two. Okay, ordinance number two tonight, bike share. The scooter and bike pilot was deemed successful, so the city decided to bring it back this coming May permanently. In order to do that, they needed to change the city code in a few different ways. They made it so companies aren't legally required to provide helmets, only encourage their use. They made it so that scooter users can use bike helmets rather um, within than this motorcycle helmets allow as the old code shared required. Mobility to and they created restrictions the on camp. where they can be used, specifically within a certain area downtown Scooter riders, bike riders cannot be on the sidewalks. There was a debate over helmet laws and some specific concerns about that sidewalk restriction. The first time I get hit by a driver who either isn't paying attention or is having a road raid incident because they don't think I should be on the road, I'm going to take your policy and I'm going to go to every single news station in town. Nonetheless, the ordinance passed six to one. Only Councilman Mike Fagan voted against. He didn't say why tonight. So bike share and scooters appear to be coming back to Spokane for good. OK, finally, now a resolution aimed at improving downtown business security. An existing program within a certain taxing district gives businesses recommendations on how to make their area safer. This resolution offers a sort of tax rebate to businesses within that district that make those changes, like installing security cameras. It faced some pretty strong opposition tonight from those who felt more cameras aren't the way to improve the downtown. We don't need cameras. We need support. But the council largely felt the program was focused on non-camera upgrades, and that's that it's up to the business district to allocate their own funds. It passed 6 to 1, the only nay vote, Councilwoman Kate. Burke. So some businesses can now expect some incentives for improving their security. Spokane citizens can now expect bikes and scooter sharing programs to be back in just a couple months here. And if you want to hang out peacefully in the city hall lobby on the first floor, you can now do that and nobody can kick you out. Reporting from the very busy Spokane City Hall tonight, Casey Decker, Krem 2 News. Casey, thank you. Well, the debate on how to address jail overcrowding in Spokane County has been going on for years, but some say a new jail is not the answer. County commissioners are revisiting the idea of building a new jail to replace the downtown facility, but some community groups are speaking out against that. The group SCAR, Spokane Community Against Racism, joined with other organizations to host a meeting this evening at Morning Star Baptist. Community members spoke out to make sure the focus is on criminal justice reform rather than having more space to lock more people up. A local pastor says efforts need to go toward programs and resources that keep people out of jail. While Sheriff Ozzie Knezovich says he'd support a new jail and treatment programs. That our money is better spent 
or at least there's the possibility that our money would be better spent as in investing in people as opposed to incarcerating people. I think at this point we probably need to take a, a hard look at building a facility that actually works with us than against us. The county says they do not have a timeline for when or if they will bring forward plans for a new jail. In other news, a wounded Kittitas police officer was out of the hospital today and recovering at home. It was a road rage suspect who shot Officer Benito Chavez in the line of duty last week. Kittitas County Sheriff's Deputy Ryan Thompson was shot and killed. Police officers from Seattle and Bellevue escorted Chavez as he left the hospital yesterday. He and his wife say they're just grateful to the community for the support. Well, leg hurts. It's, it's going to be a long recovery, things like that. So, but I'm good, and I'm and I'm really glad to you know, have, have these departments and these people in my corner. We just want to say thank you for everyone that has supported us and we're, we couldn't be more grateful for everyone that has um, done everything. And so, thank you. Officer Chavez was shot in the leg, which hit his femur. It is expected that he will have a long road to recovery before he'll be back on the job. A memorial service for Deputy Thompson is set for Thursday at 2 p.m. It's on Central Washington University's campus in the Nicholson Pavilion. Deputy Thompson graduated from that school in 2003. Alright, to weather now, the National Weather Service in Spokane tweeted this animation tonight. The blue and the pink giving way to green means the snow across the state is melting. Looks like we're headed in the right direction. Meteorologist Thomas Patrick in the Weather Center now. Thomas, is that trend going to continue, right? Yeah, most certainly. Uh, temperatures have been quite mild, easily in the 50s during the day. Even at night, they've been above freezing most of the evening hours. This is the same map. It's a snow depth map. And in Spokane, and really the entire Columbia Basin, snow free. All thanks to a whole bunch of days in the 50s and 60s. Still a little leftover snow in Coeur d'Alene, but even the Okanagan Valley has been cleared up from that snow. It's no wonder, especially with temperatures like these 46 degrees as of the 11 o'clock hour with a little bit of light rain now beginning. So yeah, a little bit of that snowpack that is left over is going to continue to melt, especially in those big piles that have been shoveled up at the end of the driveways. This is what we're looking at at Doppler radar. A little bit of light rain through Spokane, Deer Park, uh, even up 395 up towards Colville and through Chewila. Just seeing just light rain this evening. Should be quick passing here, but most of the area likely will see uh, at least a few showers in the overnight hours, but all cleared up by the time we hit to tomorrow morning. But it's not the only chance of rain that I'm tracking throughout the course of this week. I'll let you know more about that. Coming up in just a few minutes. I'm really proud of my team for the way that we fought through adversity. Um, it's easy to, you know, make excuses and kind of roll over, and we didn't do that. I think that we fought really hard um, up until the last minute. Um, I'm proud to have gone out this way. No one likes losing, but. We well, just heard from. Uh of course, Zakira Rice of the Gonzaga women's basketball team after the Zag season came to an end with a loss in the NCAA tournament. So the Bulldogs fall in the second round to Oregon State 76 to 70 tonight. The Zags were able to keep it close most of the game and even led at halftime. Yeah, the team found a response time and time again tonight. Leanne Worth had 10 points. Zakira had 20 points, although she did run into some foul trouble. Chandler Smith had 13 points as well. She too wound up in foul trouble. Oregon State found a way to rally late in this one, Michaela Privick was the game changer. She scored 19 points and was the spark for their team, as shown here with this and one. And then this Taya Corazdale three put the game out of reach for the Zags in the final minutes. Again, they fell to Oregon State 76 to 70. Crem 2's Karthik Venkatraman is live in Corvallis tonight following the Zags loss. Karthik, what can you take away from tonight? It just looked at the end there that Gonzaga ran out of energy. I mean, Oregon State had more depth coming into it, and it kind of showed down the backstretch. I mean, Gonzaga was taking bad shots early in the shot clock, a sign of tired legs. They missed some free throw, can also be a sign of just being tired, and they left some uh, shooters wide open for Oregon State, and I really think that hurt them in the wrong one, long run. I think the uh, crowd here at Gill Coliseum really energized Oregon State and was able to help them pull through at the end and it was really that crowd that was cheering when the game was over and Oregon State just 
full of joy and cheers. They're on to the Sweet 16, and understandably on the opposite side, Gonzaga women's basketball pin drop silence. I followed them as they went down the stairs and towards their locker room, and no one was saying a word. And it's pretty understandable when you consider what they've been through this whole entire season between losing head coach Fortier's uh, brother to complications of muscular dystrophy, uh, Laura Stockton and Jill Townsend both went out in the West Coast Conference Tournament, which was big losses for them, a lot of why they had these depth issues. So it's just been an absolute roller coaster of emotions. But if there's one thing that came out of the season, it was just this unique bond and this unity that brought the whole entire team together. And it was really neat to see. And I think because of that, head coach Lisa Fortier went as far as to say that this was her favorite team that she's ever coached. And I mean, the seniors, we talked to them as well, and they took and reflected back on not only their senior year, but their whole entire careers. I'm really proud of my team for the way that we fought through adversity. Um, it's easy to, you know, make excuses and kind of roll over, and we didn't do that. I think that we fought really hard um, up until the last minute. Um, I'm proud to have gone out this way. No one likes losing, but I am proud to have been a part of this team and this be the way my senior year goes. Just looking back on this season and my whole career here, I mean, I've loved every minute of it and it's made me a better person and I wish I could come back again next year. Me too, Jan. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, uh, yeah, it's just been an amazing ride. The leadership group that we have has been lauded heavily in Spokane. Um, they're all three first team all conference. They all have a different story. Um, they're a tremendous group of young women who um, carried us on the court, they carried us off the court, uh, you know, they carried us in our personal lives, and I, I can't say enough ways. I, I could just go on and on and on about each of the three of them. Fortier also all talked about of just uh, the just the accomplishments that this team has been able to uh, just get done this season and how proud she is through of the team to just come overcome adversity time and time again throughout the year. But we had the best, the highest ranking, the best RPI. Um, you know, people are saying the best team that we've had in the history of the program, and it's because of the three of them. Z, Chandler, and Laura are the reason. They, they got the ducks in a row. They got the motivation. They were fun to play with. They, they're people you wanted to play for. So a anything that you can say about a leadership group applies to these three. And once again, I've, they've overcome a lot. And I think a lot can be said about the fact that this team overcame adversity time and time again. I mean, they beat Stanford in, earlier in the season. They won the West Coast Conference regular season. I mean, it was, it was just a huge season for them. And I think that's what they're going to be remembered most for. Reporting live in Corvallis, I'm Karthik Vekatraman, Krem 2 Sports. Karthik, thank you very much. Getting through that report before his battery apparently just died Just in the right nick there. of time. Just in the nick of time. Well, as for the men, they had a big win on Saturday against Baylor. The Zags will now go on to face familiar opponent Florida State. That is the team that defeated the Zags in last season's Sweet 16. Tip off at 4.09 p.m. this Thursday in Anaheim, and you can watch that on Krem 2. And, of course, be sure to tune in to our special pregame coverage here on Thursday. That gets started at 3.30. Again, right here on Krem 2, we'll be covering all things Zags straight from the GU campus. Should be a good time. All right, coming up, the first all-female spacewalk has been put on hold. Yeah, we'll tell you why and what that means for local astronaut Anne McLean.